Hi, I'm Jervis Lewis, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the File Manager in Plesk 12. The File Manager is a really convenient tool that kind of replaced the classic FTP client, which was something that you had to use in order to upload and download files and change file permissions. And the Plesk File Manager is something that you can use right from your web browser. So let me show you how that works. We log in as our fictitious customer here, Cave Johnson and then you should see something like this screen. At the top here you have these tabs and if you head over to files that's where you find the file manager. Right now I only have three directories here, you may have many more and one thing to keep in mind about these is that this directory here, your root directory, is not accessible from the web. So in our case we only have one domain mapped and anything in domain.com is not able to access any of this except for this folder, HTTP docs. This is where all your web files live. So if you want anyone to have access to files that you upload, then you must put them somewhere into HTTP docs or a subdirectory of that. So right now I've got all these files here and let's start with looking at text files. Uh, the file manager allows you to have a look at what is currently in a file. This one's a JPEG file, so it's an image file. And if I click on that, I can see what it is. It's an old plus four computer by Commodore. I've uploaded that a minute ago. You can either hit cancel or just go back in your browser. And with text files or HTML files, this is much more interesting. If you click on this, you get to see what the file looks like. You don't have to download it, and if you want to make a change, edit it, and then re-upload it, you can do that right from Plesk. So there's a couple of options to do that. If you just click on a file like I just did, all we do is look at it. We can't make any changes. If I click into the text here, nothing really happens. If I wanted to make a change, I have a couple of options. I can either edit this in a standard text editor, which looks just like this with editing functionality, or I can use the HTML editor, which is something, if you're familiar with WordPress, it's like the visual composition editor. So all this HTML code here is displayed a little bit like what it would look like on the website. Let's try both things. If I go into Edit in Text Editor, we don't really see a massive change, but unless you know HTML tags and you know exactly where to change your text, I would advise to stay away from this. But if you are comfortable with it, you could make a change like this and then go and save it. Clicking OK has the same effect, it just brings you, it saves the file and brings you to back to the file manager. Save as would save a copy of the file and reset would undo all the changes that you've made. So let's try that. I've just written this thing here, hello. Let's reset and it's gone. Let me click cancel here because I don't want to make any changes. In fact, I didn't want to make changes in the text editor. Let me click on index.html again. And now let me edit this in the HTML editor so you can see what that looks like. Here, look, you can now insert things like lists, so you can make text bold and all that. And in the background, this is all saved as these HTML tags. And if I wanted to make a change, instead of welcome to Parallels Plesk, I could say welcome to my screencast. Then I can do that and hit OK. And that will have saved the changes and brings me back to the file editor. To illustrate what I've actually done here, we need to look at this as if a visitor were to look at our website. So this directory here, HTTP docs, is, do, is mapped to domain.com. That's my domain here. And here's the change. Welcome to my screencast. Let me change it back. Click OK, go to your domain, refresh it, and there's that change. Very simple. But that's not all you can do with the file manager. Here's how you upload files. Via Upload Files, click it, pick something, for example this one here. It's a large video file, 400 megabytes in size, and upload it. If you wanted to give someone access to this file, make sure that you replace all the spaces in a file name with either dashes or just 
take the spaces out. Otherwise, the URL to that file looks very, very complicated. If you wanted to do that, you can either you can right-click this and say open in web browser, which would open a new tab and open this file in the web browser. Let's try it on the image, that's a bit easier here. Open in browser. And then you can see what the resulting URL for this file is. So I have domain.com forward slash plus four. Plus four is the file name, and HTTP docs is our root directory, so that'll all come out of domain.com. If you want to rename a file like mine here, which shouldn't really contain spaces because otherwise a browser needs to replace them with all kinds of funky characters, you, just, you can just hover over this and click on that little icon here and hit rename. That'll bring up a little dialog and you can rename this file into anything you like. So I'm just going to take all the spaces out. In fact, I'm just going to rename it completely. I'm going to say, if, I'm going to say this is just called video.m4v. If you'd like to distribute this file as a zip file, no problem. Just select it or select a group of files. You can even select all files together by just using this one here. Or just unselect them and pick the ones you want, maybe two files. You head over to more and say add to archive. And what that'll do is it'll create a zip archive. Give it a name and Ples goes to work in the background and we'll come back with a file called zip archive .zip, and you can give that link to people and they can download that zip file. You can also choose to delete files of course, just click on the ones you don't want anymore. Now that I've got them as a zip file maybe I don't need this anymore and I'll hit remove. There. Likewise you can upload zip files to your website and unzip them directly on the server. Let me show you how. Click on the file in question Head over to More and select Extract Files. You can choose to replace existing files if you have any. I don't, so I'm not going to tick it, and click OK. Again, Ples goes to work, unzips the file directly on the server, leaves the zip file in place, of course, and comes back with the two files that I had previously zipped up. You can also move files from one directory to another. Let me first show you how to create a directory, and then we can move these three files into it. Here's how to do that. Over here on the New tab, click on it and you get this little menu here. You can create a new file, which is an empty text file, and you can name that anything you like, or you can create a new directory. Let's start there. Give it a name, and there it is, my directory. If you click onto it, there's nothing in it right now. These two dots mean go up one directory, and as you drill down further into other directories, you see this file tree here growing. So you could now also go straight here to HTTP docs rather than just go up one directory. To move files select the ones you'd like to move and select move up here. Likewise you could also use copy which will leave the original files in place and copy them somewhere else and moving moves them from here into the directory of your choice. Let me try moving them. It asks you where you'd like to move them and I would like to move them into HTTP docs my directory. So make sure it's highlighted in dark blue here and click OK. That was fast. This is now all in my directory. Perfect. If you want to create a new file that just works the same way, hit on new and create a new file. Give it a title and you can use a HTML template. If you don't, then it'll just be an empty file with no content and with an HTML template it'll give you a little starting point in case you want to do any quick composition things here. It just puts the head tag in and you could say this is my, whoops, uh, head over to the HTML editor of course when you want to edit it, type what you like and hit OK. Again to access this file, this is now in a subdirectory, I'd have to go over to my domain forward slash my directory forward slash myfile.html hello world no formatting applied I didn't do that yeah but that is how it works just a note on the layout here if you don't want to see file permissions users and groups you can head over here to change settings and give yourself a bit more zen only if you like of course show permissions this is all ticked at the moment but if there's a particular aspect of the files that you don't want to see just untick it so show permissions and users and groups 
let's get rid of it. Likewise, there was another setting here which was show system files and directories. Now on Linux servers, the way this works is there are system files which typically start with a dot. They are hidden. Mac works the same way. Anything that starts with a dot is hidden. But some files you need to see. For example, the HD access file. This is something dot HD access tells the web server how to rewrite URLs. WordPress makes use of this technology. And it's an important file. You shouldn't mess with it. In case you want to hide this while you're working, just head over to change settings and untick this box, show system files and directories. And if you do that, anything that starts with a dot will be hidden from the view. It's still there, of course, because if you go back over to change settings, show system files and directories, you'll see it's still there. If you ever need to change permissions to files, then of course, you know, we need to see these things here. You can just click on any of these attributes for a particular file. Let me go back into my directory and say I wanted to change the permissions of this zip file here. You can click on this link and you're presented with this context menu that shows you who can read, write and execute this particular file or directory. This is the file's owner, this is the group which the owner is part of and this is everybody. Just in case you ever need it, you know where it is. That was it. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment and don't forget to watch all the other videos in this series. Bye for now.